Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here and today I would like to show you several Christmas and holiday craft fair ideas and actually just overall gift ideas. Okay, now I'm going to start with something that I created for pets and the first one here I wrapped loosely. I created little tags and what we have in here is our doggy treats and I've used the Stampin' Up! mini pizza boxes. They're from the, the holiday catalog. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna open it up to show you. Well, first, let me just this paper is so cute, and I'll show you where I got the paper. Okay, so and when you open it up, you can fit six milk bone doggy treats in there perfectly in this box. Okay, so and then I'm, I also just covered the inside with paper. Okay, now where I got this paper is is here. This is the pack, and I bought this from Hobby Lobby. Okay, and it's just super cute. I'll flip through it. <laughs> there's there's plaids, there's little doggy patterns and lots of paws. And there's actually other other prints too. So it's really versatile. It's really thick cardstock. Save your little scraps for the sides of the boxes. Now this piece here, I want to say, I bought this piece at Halloween time at Joanne. Okay, so this isn't even from this pack. This is really thin paper, but I thought it looked great on these little mini pizza boxes from Stampin' Up. Okay, and then the way I made the tags, I just used, you know, so just a regular tag and I put a sticker on them. And I got these little doggy stickers here. I think I may have got them in the back of Tuesday morning in the clearance section when you see different stickers. And right away I thought of, oh, well, I do a lot of doggy treats, so these stickers will be cute. Okay, so that was the first idea. And usually I do a video on a dozen you know, craft fair ideas. I've done one for Halloween. I've done one for autumn. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to keep to a dozen this time because I have so many things to show you. But we'll see. <laughs> okay, here's another idea. These are um, treats for kids. So what you, what you do is you get, you get like little pencils, um, erasers, from different stores, like some, like these are from the dollar store, okay, and the erasers are from another store. I start. What I did at first is I tied this little, because there was a hole already in the pencil sharpener, and I tied a little hole at the top and I clipped it on with a Santa pin. But what happened is it just sort of flopped around. So instead, I and I wanted to add bells to each, so I did add some little mini bells. So instead, I put the mini bells at the top of the tag. And I put the the pencil sharpener hanging off the middle. The reason you need this you need this twine here is because if not, the pencils will sort of flop out. Okay, so these make great stocking stuffers. And you just make sure you, you know this is adhered on. I used foam adhesives to adhere that on, and this is just um, some some good cardstock. This you know somewhat double sided. There's not a pattern on the other side, but it's still craft paper. Okay, so that's another idea. Let me move these off to the side and make more room. You may have seen this one on my blog already, thepaperchef.com. What I've done here is, this is this was the October paper pumpkin kit, pining for plaid, and so you make shaker cards. And my only variation was I just used, you know, cherry cobbler ink. So the cards I pretty much did the way the kit came. But then I took this one step further and I created this little pizza box. Again, same pizza box I was just showing you, but I made a shaker pizza, pizza box. Okay, using the paper pumpkin kit and I added some cherry cobbler ribbon and then I just added some cool little treats that fit in there nicely. Okay, so that was idea for craft fairs number three. Okay, then I created these the other day. Now. You might be saying, well, where's the mouth? I didn't think it needed a mouth, but maybe, you know, put in the comments if you think it needs a mouth and I will add a mouth. But I just liked it. I like these the way these came out. So these are, I'm, I'm just calling these my Tic Tac snowmen. And I will be putting all the instructions and dimensions on my blog. But I've used, I've used the pack, three pack of Tic Tacs from the dollar store. So you get three, three packs of Tic Tacs. And I made that the tummy, and I found a sort of a one-inch scallop circle punch that fit in here pretty well. And then I used different die cuts for, you know, the arms, um, 
the scarf I actually cut out with my brother's scan and cut. And the little hats I have die cut for. Okay, so th these are just really easy to make. I actually put circles on the back to make them more 3D. Okay, now you've seen, or if you've watched my videos, you've seen my little nugget snowman. But because these are the most popular things that I sell at craft fairs, I'd like to just show you again what they look like. Okay, these are Hershey Nugget treats, um, a retired Stampin' Up set, a uh, Snow Way. It's a, it's a really cute set. It has something like Snow Way. It's Christmas already. It's really cute. It has the little snowman face. It has scarves. Um, I even have the coordinating dies, but sometimes I use the coordinating dies, and sometimes I just take my brother scan and cut and cut out some of the shapes. Okay, so these cut these snowmen. Too cute. Now I've stopped counting the number of ideas I'm showing you, but we're still on the snowman theme. So let's show you some coffee cups. Okay, so what I've done for these coffee cups is these are um, used. I use my Cricut, okay, to cut out little pieces of coal for the mouth and little circles for the eyes and a carrot nose, okay. And I started putting, like I put a little straw in this one, have a happy holiday, but then I didn't think it really needed a straw. So I kind of went with, I went with this design and I just have different ways of putting holly on my hats, which is the top of the cup. Okay, and you can get these cups from, you know, plain cups from the Webstraat store. I'll have links to my blog on how to get these different supplies. And there's, there's other places to get them. Okay, but these these were these were stickers. I have so many things that I use. You know, I'm drawing a blank on the brand of sticker this was, but right now, but those stickers came like that in the 3D format. Okay, I also have little mini coffee cups that I make. You know, the four ounce ones as well. Okay, so that's just an idea. And then what you put inside this one, it's not coffee related things inside. I actually put a whole bag of candy inside and a little candy cane too. So I put a whole bag, got little bags at Walmart, just little snowflake bags, put candy in them, did that ahead of time. And the reason I did that is, you know, I was limited in space and you can stack the cups inside each other. And then when you're ready to go to a craft fair, which I am, then I would just simply take all the bags and put them in the cups, which, are, which were done and stack them inside each other. Okay, so next I want to show you some peppermint bells. And I started out, these are little, these are called peppermint park, pep, peppermint bark bells. I found these bells and I decided to make a little candy tray for the bells. And I started, I was going to put like little ringing bells on it, but then I found these little bells from some retired paper called Presents and Pine Cones from Stampin' Up. And I put those little bells on it. I liked it, but then I said maybe. I need a tag topper. Okay, so actually this one looks like I have two. So I just used some circles. I found some stickers at Hobby Lobby that already said Merry Christmas. I didn't even need to stamp the topper. And I just used a little snowflake pin. And this one I'm gonna put maybe a little gingerbread man on, but I'm not sure. These are kind of in progress. Just an idea I just came up with. And then keeping along those lines, I had these little boxes from Stampin' Up, these little clear acetate boxes, and I thought the little bells would look so cute in there on display. And then because they're peppermint bark, everything's going to taste like peppermint, smell like peppermint. So I went ahead and put other peppermints in there and some candy canes. Um, cherry cobbler. Let's see, ribbon. We have some gold baker's twine, little bells, and a tag. I only made one of these. This was just more, more of like a way to use up some more of my peppermint bells from the bag. Okay, so moving off to the side. I have these really fun stocking stuffers that are very popular at all of my craft fairs, and I really should have made a lot more of them, but they're so easy to make that I can actually make them at the craft fair. Um, a good place to buy these kinds of emery boards or like nail files are, are big lots and and dollar stores, or sometimes, like if you go after Christmas, 
You might be able to get like actual Christmas pattern ones on clearance, but maybe they're too expensive before Christmas and you might be able to find them on clearance. So there's just different kinds of emery boards in there. And the box is a simple box that I make. I'll put the instructions on my blog, but um, I pinch the bottom, you know, to hold the box together. And I, I use a tacky glue for that. Okay, one popular thing that I'm not really finished with yet, but because I'm not really finished with the toppers, but one very popular thing at my fairs are these, what I just call my dollar items. And I, I put M&Ms or Skittles in the bags, and I use just different papers for toppers, okay? And then I put sentiments on them or clothespins or different things. These are actually really good M&Ms. These are like mint-flavored M&Ms. And I also have like Skittles and things. But it's good to have dollar items because people come to your booth to check out your dollar items. Okay, so that's why it's good to have the dollar items. Okay, next I'd like to show you some different variations of some lip balm treats that I made. And I have to, my voice is fading because my table, things are spread out all over my table. Now, in the past, I've when I've made lip balm holders, I've just made like a tag, a uh, hole in the tag and I've held the lip balm and I still did that for the kids lip balm now these lip balms are from Big Lots these these little ones I want to show you see these kind of kitty kitty lip balms and I believe they're only a dollar which is a great deal okay so if you need lip balm for craft fairs Big Lots is a place to go well I'm gonna show you where else you can get them from now for those I just put them out because that way parents can see these would be good for little girls and they can see the tag. Now, but for the adult stocking stuffers, I, th I thought let's use, you know, this, this cute paper that I found. Again, I found this paper in Hobby Lobby. I'm using, I'm starting off using like retired stamping up cardstock because stamping up really has the best cardstock. I mean, and I, go, I get cardstock from all over the world. And I mean, Germany makes pretty good cardstock, but I mean, Stampin' Up! makes cardstock that no matter when you bend it and fold it, it score it. It always keeps its color. It's the color is solid all the way through. So I used a lot of retired colors that coordinated with this Winter Wonderland paper I found. Okay? And this organza ribbon that I had from some party favors was perfect for, for holding the lip balm in place. And I put that ribbon underneath before I, I glued on these top pieces. Okay, now this lip balm, I told you I get lip balm at different places. These types right here were from Family Dollar. These are really cool because they're like the sort of the liquid ones. I thought, and these, but when I made my holder, I have to show you what I'm talking about. When I first made my holder and designed this, it was designed for just the, you know, regular lip balm. Okay, and then I didn't want to redesign my holder because... I already had the circle punch, which helped me hold this lip balm in place. Again, I will have instructions on my blog. I'm just going over this for inspiration at this moment. These are from the Dollar Tree. Okay, this lip balm. And I love these because they're sealed. Okay, and so you could take them out of the pack of two for a dollar, and then they're sealed, and you can put them in here. There's another brand to be careful with. It's not sealed. Here, this is the brand I'm going to show you. Okay, this one, I kept thinking it was like a used lip balm when I was doing this. Here, Assured. Also from the Dollar Tree, I don't recommend this one because it's not sealed with the little seal there. Okay, um, if the paper, if the designer series paper was pretty dark, I either put like one or two panels of lighter color paper inside so to write your message because you can't write on the dark part. Okay, I, I believe this is still Winter Wonderland paper. Yes. Okay, I don't need to open these all up. I think you get the idea. So these are these are lip balms. Get them at the Dollar Tree. I want one more thing about lip balms, and then I really will get off this topic. Is I found these in the checkout counter at one of the one of the stores. These are a dollar just for one. But look, candy cane lip balm. So I just bought one, and I thought this is a great stocking stuffer. I'm gonna use this for something because just the colors are fantastic. Okay, so next I'm going to show you just some candy treats. 
I make a lot of these as well. These are these are treats I would charge like two dollars for, or might I might charge depending on what the market will bear, maybe three dollars, two for five. But it's it, these are candy treats, and then I put the little sentiments on top. I usually do a lot better job with my sentiments and stamping, but really I'm behind on all that. But I so instead I was like putting like cool clothes pins on them and some stickers my friend Tammy gave me. Okay, so I just wanted to show you, you know, that you can just use candy to jazz up the treats. Now, for those, I use the two-inch cellophane bags from Stampin' Up. I use those two-inch bags for everything. Did I don't know if I mentioned that, that I use the two-inch bags from Stampin' Up in the current catalog for these treats, the peppermint. Okay, I use them for everything. They, they're just fantastic. I use them for my little snowman I showed you earlier with the nuggets. Okay, I've stopped counting how many ideas we have for craft fairs, but these are just simple little pillow boxes with this, you know, Be Merry Designer Series paper from Stampin' Up. It goes great with black. And then I found some chalk stickers from Michaels that just went fantastic with this because they're already like a chalk color and they went great with this black and red. Okay, I made a bunch of these little pillow boxes with treats inside Okay, for the craft fair. Okay, one of the groups that I'm in on Facebook is we, I'm in this like coffee lovers group and the coffee lovers do a blog hop and my blog hop is starting soon. So this is what I made for my blog hop and I'm going to like in, share the dimensions in my blog for that. But these are something similar to what I've been making in the past on my blog is I've been making like these instant Starbucks coffee treats. I've been doing that, but this time I found really cool paper at, um, I believe, like Tuesday morning, okay, and it, it had this great coffee pattern on it, and then it had snowflakes. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't double-sided. I had to do this myself. I had to sort of make it look like it was double-sided, and unlike designer series paper by Stampin' Up, but I love how these came out because this red from the instant Starbucks coffee treats coordinated perfectly with the red in the cup on the paper. And then I used different um, punches from Stampin' Up and different sentiments for for those coffee treats, stocking stuffers. All right, well, we're getting to take a lot of your time here and I hope you're still with me because if you are, you are in for a surprise because I'm going to show you, as a final thing, I do have actually, believe it or not, I have about 10 more boxes at the end of my table, but because of the time, I'm just going to show you one box, okay? And it's called, an, it's called a pyramid box, and I used my Big Shot Pro die to make this, but what I love about it is, is I can, I could have glued it all together, but instead I found that my mom made me this little Santa hat. She made me a couple of Santa hats, and I found that you can just simply make it an explosion box by putting the Santa hat on top. And when you pull the Santa hat off, this box just like opens up, and you can fill like so much candy in it. Okay, so this is this is what I did with it. I'm probably gonna have some kind of like Velcro or something as well, but I just love this pyramid box. The Big Shot Pro, that the advantage of it is that it can cut uh, 12 inch by 12 inch dies and so that's the pyramid box die and this little hat is just something my mom sewed for me okay it holds it holds this in place so um thank you for watching if you have any questions about any of my projects you can ask me and then i will give you a link to the blog post where i specifically give you the instructions some are already on my blog and some will be on there shortly but this is craft fair season so it may not be for another week or so. But thank you, and please visit my blog.